The National Women's Soccer League just canceled all of its games this weekend after disturbing allegations against multiple soccer coaches. The North Carolina Courage fired its head coach, Paul Riley, after a bombshell article in The Athletic. A former player, Sinead Farley, accuses Coach Riley of coercing her into having sex on multiple occasions. Farley and another player also say Coach Riley made them kiss each other to avoid doing a difficult drill during practice. Riley says the allegations against him are completely untrue. But it's not just Riley under fire here. The Washington Spirits former head coach Richie Burke fired after an episode in the Washington, or an expose, I should say, in the Washington Post. It accused him of verbally and emotionally abusing his players. The Washington Post reports throughout one game, Coach Burke berated a rookie until she appeared to have a panic attack on the field, clutching her chest because she couldn't breathe. As she hyperventilated, Burke just kept going, a former player said. Quoting her, when he smells blood, he goes harder. The reaction from players was outrage. The players' union demanding an end to what it calls systemic abuse plaguing the NWSL. U.S. Women's National Team Captain Becky Sauerbronn said, to be where we are today is unacceptable. The league and every club have to do better. And the superstar Megan Rapinoe tweeted, men protecting men who are abusing women. Burn it all down. Let all their heads roll. With us now, the author of that Washington Post piece, sports investigations reporter, reporter I should say, Molly Hensley Clancy. Molly, uh, fr from your reporting, how widespread is this kind of behavior? And why haven't we been hearing about it screaming from the rafters for a while? Uh, unfortunately, I think it's incredibly widespread. Uh, the league has actually had four coaches leave this year because of misconduct, and that's just this season. Um, and in, in all those cases, I think we see a really widespread systemic failure to protect players. Those coaches had all previously faced allegations of abuse and they were hired anyway. As to why we haven't happen? heard about... <laughs> I mean, I, I think that frankly, the league has not been listening to players um, and has not been prioritizing player safety. And I think that's why they haven't felt comfortable speaking up before. Uh, I think this is the first time they've really felt comfortable going mm -hmm. on the record with me and with The Athletic to talk about what happened to them. Well, well, based on your reporting and for that matter, that of The Athletic, any sense that criminal charges may be forthcoming in any of this? I have not heard about criminal charges, um, but certainly there is a, a reckoning that has had a lot of consequences. The Athletic is just now reporting, actually, that the league's commissioner has resigned. Wow. Um, FIFA has also opened an investigation into the coach, uh, Paul Riley, who lost his license. And uh, I think this is kind of just the beginning of, of the kinds of repercussions we're going to see from this. Well, they've canceled everything this weekend. What, what do you see in a week, in a month? Um, I, I would be surprised if this is the last uh, of the revelations of abuse we hear against um, some of the people, it, it, you know, who have been running this league. I think that now that players are empowered to speak up, they're going to start talking about what's happened to them. And I also think they're going to be demanding some some more changes beyond just the resignation. So I think that they're they're empowered right now. Um, and it's it's only the, the beginning. Molly Hensley Clancy from The Washington Post. Molly, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.